Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today I'm going to be giving you some fall book recommendations. So I've done this twice before in the past, I think, so I will leave both of those videos down below if you want even more fall book recommendations. So today I thought I would give you some more recent fall book recommendations that I've read, and in addition, also give you some fall book recs that some of my patrons have recommended. You know, I'm a little late with this video. A lot of people have been putting this video up, like, the beginning of October, but I figure we still have November, you know? Everybody forgets November is also still fall, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's still fall, so that works. Also, fall is just like my favorite season to recommend books for because as I've said so many times on my channel already, fall is a very fantasy-driven season for me, and my favorite genre is fantasy, so that's why it's my favorite. First on this list is actually Legendborn by Tracy Dion, which is a very recent read for me. I think I read it last week or the week before or something, and this book was so, so good. So the premise of this book follows this girl named Brie whose mother just recently died, and she is attending this early uh, high school student sort of program at UNC Chapel Hill. She gets to school and she starts witnessing these weird magical events and then comes to find out that the descendants of King Arthur have their own little secret society and they're starting to fight this war and then comes to realize that her mother's death might not have actually been what she thought it was. There might be some sort of thing that happens that has to do with the secret society so she decides to infiltrate it and figure out what the heck happens. There's something about a King Arthur retelling or spin-off sort of story that really screams fall to me. For some reason, I always flash back to that old Disney Channel original movie, Avalon High, if you remember that. I don't, just the feeling that that sort of encompasses to me is very fall. I don't know why. Do with that what you will. There's also this like love triangle thing that they hint at happening, even though like, you know, the character gets with one of the characters, but then like there's another character who you're like, Ooh, what's gonna happen in book two? Because now that, you know, this opportunity happened, but then this opportunity happened, and like there could be a little something something that happened in there, it's, oh, oh my, oh my god. I'm so excited for the second book. I like, I need it so badly. And the last thing that I want to touch on on this book to force you all to read it, because I loved it so much, was it's just such a perfect blend of fantasy with King Arthur retelling with like, modern day and also touching on like racism. It's so good. I love it. I love it. I can't say anything more about it. I love it. Okay, next book. Next up, I want to mention a book that I talked about in my previous wrap-up, and that is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This was my Patreon book of the month for September, so I have a full spoiler-filled vlog up for that if you are part of my Patreon or you are interested in joining, but um, for in all intents and purposes here, I'll give you like sort of a little summary without going too much into it. Essentially, the story follows a boy named Yadriel who is trans and he is in a family of brujos, meaning uh, they are sort of witches, but they look over the dead and the spirits, think Dia de los Muertos and like that realm of things. So essentially, his family doesn't accept him as being trans, so he just he's going to perform the ceremony to make himself a true brujo, raise somebody from the dead and send them back to like show them that like yes I'm a boy I can do this. He tries to do it, he ends up summoning the wrong spirit, and then the spirit won't leave. So he has to try to figure out how to make this guy leave. It's a wonderful story, it hits all of the right points for being cute and heartwarming and just everything that you want in a fall story, it's here. Plus the timing of the story takes place right around this time of the year when Dia de los Muertos or like October 30th, 31st, Halloween, whatever you want to call it, when that comes up. So it would be a perfect time to pick this up. It's all about ghosts and creepy things, but it's also like extremely heartwarming at the same time. So it's a great combination of the two and I highly recommend that you read it. So there's one more fantasy story that I want to talk about in this video before I move on to a couple of thrillers. And this fantasy is another recent read that I just read this month and I've been trying to read it for a very long time and haven't gotten around to it until this month and if you know what I'm talking about that's good. It is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson or The Final Empire is technically the name of the first book. Yes, I figured this out. Thank you to everybody over the years who has tried to help me figure out Mistborn versus The Final Empire. I, I figured it out. We're good. Everything's fine. Okay, if you're anything like me, you just want a really, really good, interesting, like, very in-depth high fantasy that you can just lose yourself in in the fall winter and this definitely hits all of the marks. It's action packed even though it takes place over a full year so even though like the timeline is very long and stretched out it just feels like everything is happening. There's 
just lots of political intrigue. There's like this whole sort of heist slash taking over of the government thing happening, which is great. Everything about this book was so good. The main character, Vin, is just somebody who you want to root for. She's so like, you know, comes from the bottom and just sort of rises up realizes who she is, realizes her full potential. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so now I have two mystery thriller YA books that I want to talk about. The first of which is The Silence of Bones by June Her, which I actually read during the summer, but I really think that this could have been a great fall book as well. So this story takes place in Korea in the 1800s during the Joseon era. We follow this young girl who is basically like an indentured servant and um, she works for the police bureau because back during this time in Korea there were rules that if they found like a female body or you know some was murdered and it was a woman um, that only women can touch another woman if that makes sense because of course only men can be police officers and investigators it only makes sense we follow this young girl named Sol, and she is working at the police station and they happen upon this murder of this i think it's like a high class individual this woman i can't remember for sure but basically it sort of tumbles into this big investigation and conspiracy regarding one of the cops in the place and then there's like so many plot twists that happen that like i just completely forgot what the entire story was about but this young girl essentially takes it into her own hands and tries to figure out what happened and whether this cop who is working with them is is like a bad guy and that kind of thing. It also definitely had that very creepy atmospheric feeling to it where like you weren't sure what was going to happen. It was a bit suspenseful, but then also like, you know, because it was historical and because it was involving a murder and because she wasn't supposed to be doing half the things that she ends up doing in this book and she knows she could get in trouble for it. It's just like all of those things combined end up making a very like eerie sort of feeling. And then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which I read, I think like the end of last year I read it and it was so good. So this book is about this girl named Pip who decides to reinvestigate this cold case um, but wasn't really a cold case. She's convinced that they got the wrong guy, but this big like high profile case that happened in her town five years ago, she decides to reinvestigate it for her senior project and turns out that there is more to the story than they thought. Something that I really loved about this book was that it's told in a combination of interview transcripts and um, regular like old plot narrative writing and like different crime documents and things like that. It's a very sort of a multimedia story um, and it takes the story to like a whole new level. And so the last story that I am going to recommend that you read for fall is a extremely recent read and one that honestly could put me in a book slump if I didn't like have to read a couple of books that I'm going to force myself to read. Otherwise I genuinely probably would not want to read anything at this point. And that story is none other than The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Like I can't even form words to describe this book. Um, if you haven't seen this story everywhere, around social media and bookstores, ev like literally everywhere, um, hi, hello, this book is amazing and it's, it's everything, you should read it. Um, it's about this girl named Addie LaRue who was born in the 1600s. She wants different things than what is going to be promised for her life. So she makes a deal with a devil essentially and says, hey, I want more time. And so the devil is like, okay, you can have an immortal life, but you're gonna be doomed to be forgotten by everyone you meet. You're going to not be able to say your name or leave your mark on anything. And in addition, I'm gonna get your soul when you're ready and done. And she's like, okay, fine. And she goes for it. She doesn't know all of this up front, but she goes for it and finds all this out. She's basically being cursed. So the whole story is her living her life, blah, 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 until one day in the modern world, she goes into a bookstore, she meets a guy, she goes back in a couple days later and he remembers her. So it's this big ass thing. It's so good. It, uh, mm. Reasons why I'm recommending this for fall. It's a bit historical. So for me, historical fiction, it's just like, it just puts you in a different setting. It just really like, I don't, I don't know, something about historical fiction and like reading about historical things and stuff just feels fall to me. I don't know, I'm not, I can't explain. I'm sorry. The atmosphere in this story is very, I want to say like mystical. It's very like compelling. It's, it's like, one of those stories that you start reading and you get lost in and it just you know that something is going to happen but you 
you don't want to know what that is while you also just like are dying to know what it is and there's just so many things that you're feeling at once that it's just it's overwhelming and so you have to put it down like six times while you're reading it even though you could very well finish this book in one day you don't want to because like I said you're, you're so overwhelmed by your feelings that you just like you can't keep reading because of that it's it was my ride with this book was so complicated and I'm gonna talk about it more in my wrap-up I can't explain why it feels very fall to me and why it feels very like mystical and it's just people who who are in this world but also have a foot in another one it's uh i can't i can't explain clearly i can't find words right now so i'm just gonna go ahead and say read this book if you haven't already it's just as good as everybody is saying that it is. And that's that. <laughs> okay, and so now I'm going to get into a few of the books that some of my patrons recommended for fall, aka spooky books. So first up, we have three book recommendations from Blake. The first of which is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, which is a book that I had been planning on reading this month, and uh, she says it's very spooky. Apparently, it's actually a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses, which I didn't know about that story, and I didn't know that this was a retelling. So that's a really interesting thing to know. Know. but essentially from what I understand it's about a girl and her 11 sisters so there's 12 of them and each one has mysteriously died um, over the course of the past few years possibly or the past few months I'm not 100% sure um, but essentially they keep dying and so one day the, the next one dies and this girl one of the girls named Annalie um, decides that something is wrong because the way that she died it doesn't make any sense um, she wouldn't like throw herself off a cliff if that makes sense so somebody must have murdered her and so she goes and tries to figure out what the heck happened um, apparently it's very gothic, it's very eerie and creepy and gives off very like haunted house sort of vibes, which I'm here for. Um, and the reason that I'm holding the dust jacket is actually because I started reading it and I do have to agree it does give off all of those things. So um, here we go. So the next story that she recommends is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones, which I had never heard of actually until she recommended it and it actually does sound pretty creepy. It's about this 17-year-old girl named Rin and her and her siblings their parents die and so they've been scraping together a like meager earning existence as grave diggers in a local town but the problem is that apparently the dead won't always stay dead so they keep rising back up and they're known as bone houses and so she and this boy named Ellis decide to investigate when they start attacking more feroc ferociously. And then the third book that she recommended was The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. Apparently it's about a town that is haunted around the same time every year by a group of witches who seduce and drown the boys of the town to get revenge for the townspeople for murdering them a few centuries prior. Which again, sounds creepy as heck. <laughs> so next up is Stevie who had a bunch of recommendations but I chose two of them that I have heard of to share with you guys. The first of which is The Archived by Victoria Schwab, which I've talked about on my channel before, how much I've wanted to read it and just haven't read it yet. Essentially, this is about a girl who works in the library of the dead. That's all I know about it. And that's all I have wanted to know about it for the past couple of years. And that's all I've shared with you guys. So that's it. But you know, that alone just speaks to me in a way that says that this is an October book and that I should probably get to it before the month is over. And so the next book that she recommended was The Forest of Souls, or Just just Forest of Souls, sorry, by Lori M. Lee, which I have actually seen a lot of recently, so I guess a lot of people have been reading this for fall. So the story is about this girl named Sersha Ashwin, who is training to become the Queen's next royal spy, but then one day her plans are der derailed when her best friend dies, and then she manages to bring them back to life. So apparently she's the first soul guide in living memory and she's summoned to the domain of the spider king and she is supposed to stop the dead wood an ancient forest possessed by souls so she has to sort of master her newly awakened abilities before uh, the trees shatter the brittle piece or worse claim Sengo the friend she would die for okay so definitely sounds like fall to me I love that it's a fantasy and I also love that it's about like this creepy sort of woods that like have a life of their own which like sounds again like I said really creepy to me so um, definitely is going on my list. I am here for it. Thank you guys so much for your recommendations. So the last person who gave me some recommendations was Maddie and she said this coven won't break was apparently a really good one.
It sounds really good. I love that there's some LGBTQ representation in here. I'm down for that. I'm here for the magical sort of thing. I feel like I haven't read a whole lot of books with witches in them, so I would definitely be interested in trying this one out. I feel like I go toward like the dark, mysterious sort of books, and I never go for like the, I want to say like hocus pocus sort of, or like Halloween Town, like, like the upbeat sort of like, you know, witches in high school sort of thing. I never go for that. So I'm really glad that Maddie gave us this recommendation because uh, I probably wouldn't have checked it out had somebody not told me to read it. And then she also says the Deathless Girls is awesome magical gothic fall vibes. Which, like I just said, I am here for, so let's see what that one is about. Gothic, intoxicating, feminist, darkly provoking, and deeply romantic, this is the breathtakingly imagined, untold story of the Brides of Dracula. On the eve of her divining, the day she'll discover her fate, 17-year-old Lil and her twin sister Kizzy are captured and enslaved by the cruel Boyar Valkar, taken far away from their beloved traveler community. Forced to work in the harsh and unwelcoming castle kitchens, Lil is comforted when she meets Mira, a fellow slave who she feels drawn to in a way she doesn't understand, but she also learns about the dragon, a mysterious and terrifying figure of myth and legend who takes girls as gifts. They may not have their divining day, but the girls will still discover their fate. Okay, that synopsis didn't really help me understand anything, but the Brides of Dracula sounds interesting. We got vampires happening here, which again is not something that I normally reach for. I've never read like a full vampire book since honestly Twilight, to be completely honest with you. So, I'd be interested. Even though it doesn't sound like they're vampires, it sounds like they're being captured by the vampire. I don't really know what's happening. I don't know the Brides of Dracula at all, so I would be interested in seeing what this is about. She did say that it is awesome magical gothic fall vibes, and that's what I'm here for. So thank you, Maddie. So yeah, um, I hope you guys got some good recommendations out of this. I hope you go and you pick up some of these books and you read them and you love them like I did. And I'm really eager to get to some of the books that my patrons recommended because they sound great. And I've seen a couple of them around all the time. And I think it's just time that I start one. So I'm here for it. Thank you guys so much. If you have a particular book that you think is very, very fall, gives off all the fall vibes and you are here for it, let me know down below. Give me your recommendation that you would read for a book this month or in the next month since November is also still fall as we established at the beginning of this video. But other than that, I think that is going to be it for this video, you guys. If you want to follow me on any of my socials, all of my handles are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!